Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stop stories. A joint effort is underway to address the legal disposal of oil sludge at the Wasco treatment plant in Beauceju. St. Lucia draws closer to introducing advanced ICT technology in the agriculture sector. The government's summer employment program gets underway with the training of successful applicants. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The Water and Sewage Company Limited Wasco is currently working with the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, for immediate remedial measures following the discovery of the illegal disposal of oil sludge at the Wasco treatment plant at Beauceju. An investigation was conducted on Monday, May 27, 2019, by the Environmental Health Department, where it was discovered that a significant quantity of oil had been disposed of at the plant. Acting Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanan highlighted a number of observations that were made. The, the quantity was so significant that uh, we saw the spillage had uh, overflowed the pit and consequently contaminated some of the lands to the bottom part of the property. Further, uh, the oil had gotten into the nearby watercourse and this had resulted in a large fish kill uh, that we observed. It was uh, further observed that uh, uh, there was a large quantity of oils that, that surface and affected the vegetation in the area. The National Oil Spill Committee of Nemo will be spearheading the cleanup at the Wasco treatment plant to ensure that the area is brought back to its original state. The committee has also advised Wasco on an appropriate contractor to deal with such spillage. According to the chairman of the National Oil Spill Committee, Christopher Alexander, Wasco has agreed to submit to Nemo a plan of action for the cleanup procedures. The Oil Spills Committee will also be having a monitoring team through various agencies and uh, the key agencies be, being Ministry of Health and the Fisheries Department to monitor the cleanup has been undertaken by the team that WASCO will be giving that contract to. We also would admonish persons that are bringing waste to the facility that no oil sludge or no solid waste should be brought to that facility. The committee has agreed to monitor the situation for a period of at least three months to ensure that the oil being removed is buried on site. Wasco has informed that measures will be taken to ensure that such an event does not reoccur. Wasco has assured the Oil Spills Committee that they will be implementing immediate measures in-house to increase the monitoring of the trucks that enter the facility. In that regard, we're expecting the positioning of, of cameras on that site and also the workers of WASCO doing um, monitoring um, on a case-by-case -case basis to ensure that the trucks that are entering and leaving the facility, that they can sign on to a document indicating that they are not bringing items to the facility that is not um, acceptable to WASCO. Nemo is imploring users of the plant to be conscious of actions that can have negative effect on the environment. Disposal of garbage, oil sludge and the like are not permitted and companies who need guidance on such disposal are advised to seek the assistance of the Solid Waste Management Authority and the Environmental Health Division. St. Lucia draws closer to introducing more advanced ICT technology to the agriculture industry under a project named Advancing ICTs for Climate Smart Agriculture Practices. The organization hosted a one-day workshop on ICT interventions for the sector. The CODI workshop, which got the support from the Agriculture Ministry and technical partners such as the OECS Commission and DAICA, brought together stakeholders of the industry, including students. The activity focused on market intelligence as a strategy to better manage climatic variability. 
Cardi representative in St. Lucia, Andrea Vieira, says she hopes that by hosting this workshop, which highlighted ICT for agriculture, stakeholders will see the value of using modern ICT in bolstering economic activity, crop production, and information sharing within the sector. We hope that this project would be the beginning of more to come. We are hoping that more funding can come as well so that we can assist the farmers. But as it is right now, it is all covered by the CARICOM Japan Cooperation Friendly Overseas Cooperation. And we must say thank you to them for the sponsorship and the drive to recognize a need for such a project and to use St. Lucia as the pilot country to have such a project running for the OECS. Minister for Agriculture Honorable Ezekiel Joseph in addressing the opening ceremony of the workshop says that stakeholder use and willingness to adopt ICT in agriculture should be encouraged as it does give a platform for agriculture constituents to collaborate, attain up-to-date market information and for finding solutions to ongoing threats to our agriculture economy. The whole aspect of information to assist us, the farmers, in production scheduling. So at least when we are in the position to market our products, we have the market for it. Because we need everyone to come on board to give support to this initiative. And I'm sure we all know the crops that we have targeted in the first instance. But for us to be able to accomplish that objective, there are a number of things that we need to do. Of course, we start today with the whole aspect of technology and looking at production scheduling, which is critical in the, for us to accomplish our objet objectives. Many ICT in agriculture interventions have been developed and tested around the world to help agriculturists improve their livelihoods through increased agricultural productivity and income, or by reducing risks. For us in St. Lucia, ICT for the industry will work to enhance efforts in climate change initiatives for the sector and to make good on the government's promises to ensure sustainable and secure nutrition and food sources. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. Close to 40 students converged at the Public Service Training Institute on Tuesday, May 28, 2019 for the first ever formal orientation training for students in the annual summer employment program more on this report from Julita Peter. Over the years, successful applicants of the Government of St. Lucia Summer Employment Program have been subjected to informal orientation sessions within the assigned agencies. However, this year, the Department of the Public Service has added a vital component to the program. From now on, students will undergo a comprehensive orientation training prior to their stint. Betty Blanchard is Director of Training at a Public Service Training Institute. It's a one-day program where we bring all the summer students together and we present to them on various areas. The key topics are the structure and function of the public service, ethics and professionalism, time management, on-the-job skills and student responsibility, and the introduction to the staff orders. These are the some of the various topics. Presenters were drawn from various ministries and departments of the public service. The summer employment program is open to fifth form students, year one college students, and university students who are not in their final year. Students are granted a two-month period of employment from June to July or July to August. Students receive a stipend to assist them in defraying the cost of school supplies. Unfortunately, due to a limited budget, less than 200 students are accommodated under the program in any given year. Meanwhile, the Public Service Training Institute recently completed the compilation of a 75-page orientation booklet for new entrants into the public service. In the past, our orientation was just a two-day program where we would bring persons in and we would give them an insight as to what happens and what is expected of them in the public service. However, we saw the need to have an online component. So a lot of what is in there is the staff orders and other policies and regulation which they need to know about. So we have compiled that and this is our online component of the program. So we email this to the new entrants, they would read through it 
and the, there is an online questionnaire. They answer the question and then they come prepared for our face-to-face -face component of that program with questions and other concerns which they may have. Staff of the Public Service Training Institute compiled the orientation manual. Julita Peter reporting from the Communications Unit of the Department of the Public Service. Nearly half a million dollars has been donated to non-governmental organizations and social institutions from the proceeds of the Independence Ball hosted annually by Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney. Here's Anissa Antoine. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia made a donation of over 450,000 EC dollars in support of well-deserving causes and organizations. The monies were raised from donations received at this year's Prime Minister's Independence Ball. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, expressed gratification towards the members of the different causes for their efforts and hard work. I'm so inspired by the people of this country who continue to remind me how resilient we are. Because I know that there's something in common with all the groups here. That despite you get on your knees and praying that something might drop from the sky, that when that thing does not drop from the sky, and many times it has not, right? You find a way to continue to proceed. And the idea of giving up never happens. Causes that benefited include the Cornerstone Humanitarian Society, the Cerebral Palsy Association, the Lady Gordon Opportunity Center, and the Blind Welfare Association. Linda Preville, principal of the Lady Gordon Opportunity Center, explained that the donations received will assist the center with ongoing projects. The Lady Gordon Opportunity Center, formerly the School for the Hearing Impaired, we serve children with a range of disabilities. And this money came just in time because we are about to embark on a project and like Joseph, I was saying, Lord, where is the rest of the money coming from? We have received money, but it all goes to the training. But we need to put down equipment and we need to put down our, the house to, for the project. And I'm saying, where am I going to get this money? So when this money came, I say, thank you, God, because it is a need. And this project is not going to give our young persons a sense of independence but they are going to become employable. The handing over ceremony took place at the office of the Prime Minister on Thursday, May 23rd, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be continuing its preparations of its contingent for the 2019 Winnet Island Schools Games to be held in Dominica. Another planning meeting is scheduled for Friday starting at 10 in the morning at the conference room of the Ministry on Miku Street. Coaches assigned to prepare teams will be gathering to assess how they have been coming together for training in preparation for this year's games and see how they can streamline the training program. Among the coaches working again within the various disciplines are Shem Maxwell, Cuthbert Modas, Alban Estefan, Dennis Sinclair, Jermaine Thomas and Ron de Merville. Two officials from the ministry participated in a technical meeting held in Dominica last week. Director of Sports, Patrick Matre, 
and School Sports Coordinator Isabel Alexander Markey. They were among officials from the competing Winnet Islands who gathered to finalize crucial elements of the Games. The St. Lucia National Youth Council has announced that nominations are officially open for positions on its executive board for the period 2019 to 2021. The St. Lucia National Youth Council, the NYC, is a democratic and independent non-governmental organization made up of youth and student organizations. The executive board comprises seven positions, president, first vice president, second vice president, general secretary, assistant general secretary, treasurer, and public relations officer. All youth organizations have been invited to nominate competent young persons to fill in the various positions on or before the deadline of June 28, 2019. Once candidates are confirmed, a public press conference will be held to showcase the individuals contesting each position, and one round of televised presidential debates will take place. The date for the NYC General Assembly and elections slated for Saturday, August 3, 2019. Nomination forms are available at the NYC office, the District Youth and Sports Council, and online via the St. Lucia National Youth Council's Facebook page. The nominee for any position on the NYC executive must be between the ages of 18 and 35, a registered member of a youth organization registered under District Youth and Sports Council in accordance with the NYC Constitution, Article 3, membership, or a member of a recognized youth-led organization registered with the St. Lucia National Youth Council or the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. The election process is managed by an independent electoral committee. The outgoing executive members are Jeshwan Andrew, Nias Alfred, Ajani Laborn, Anya Edwin, Latoya Charles, Rajin Montout, Raquel John. Their council was established on April 14, 1985. In 1997, the St. Lucia National Youth Council Incorporation Act was passed in Parliament, making the council the legal and legitimate body representing youth throughout the island. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucia has received grant funding from the Association of Conservation of Threatened Parrots, the ACTP, along with staff training for the management of the Gabriel Charles Forestry Complex. The overarching expectation is such that by the end of the agreement period, St. Lucia would be outfitted with a refurbished Gabriel Charles Forestry Complex, which would boast a state-of-the-art wildlife conservation and education center. The new MOU does include components for the operations and funding of that center. Minister with Responsibility for Forestries, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph says, St. Lucia is now poised to become a leader in wildlife and forestry conservation in the OECS. We can see that we are well on our way as it pertains to finalizing the, the, the project. We are now um, signing a new agreement as it pertains to how we operationalize the, pro the project, how we equip the project, and how we staff the project. And ACP has agreed to give grant funding to that effect um, for at least for one year. Um, so it will be their responsibility to manage, um, to manage it with, of course, when I say manage it, to give us support in managing it by training our staff both in St. Lucia and of course we have now, right now two of two St. Lucians in, in Germany being trained by ECDP to, to assist us in managing the facility. The move to improve the services offered by the Gabriel Charles Forestry Complex is seen as a strategic initiative by the Agriculture Ministry as it provides a solid testimony for the ongoing work by agriculture leaders in the partnership with the Ministry of Tourism in designing the policy agenda for an improved agritourism brand for St. Lucia. They have agreed to assist in the PR promotion of the facility and how we collaborate with the many schools to educate um, our school children to encourage them to visit the facility. So I think it's a very good initiative. Um, it's one where it's new to us in the region and it also is in keeping with our plan as a government as to how we restructure the new agricultural station to make it an agro-tourism center. And what's happening at, at the forestry departments is the first stage in we as a government being able to accomplish that initiative. 
The Agriculture Ministry has identified other areas of collaboration to diversify its agriculture offerings, upgrading the infrastructure and services offered to wildlife enthusiasts, students and other stakeholders is seen as a move in the right direction. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Fee Clark reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We joined Primus Hutchinson for the NCN Nouvelle Arqueon. Monsieur Ta Nisha, Monsieur Madame, Department, qui est une responsabilité pour formation au gouvernement, c'est le GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qu'on pose au Nouvelle Arqueon, pose au Primus Hutchinson. C'est aussi j'ai trouvé assistance pour aider bâtir capacité contre des désastres naturels. C'est l'ambassade de pays de l'Amérique pour ce pays caribla et Babad qui présente le gouvernement cette ci et puis le téléphone satellite. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour faire les étrangers, honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, oui, merci, et puis gratitude pour le gouvernement de l'Amérique à ce compte gouvernement cette ci Le ministre Flood nous a dit que nous avons vivre à la terre côté nous bien risquable pour des désastres naturels. Chaque année, nous nous préparer pour la saison cyclone. On a flood faire référence pour pays Dominique qui peut quand même bien trouver bon soulagement en bas yon méchant cyclone et qui a préparé encore pour une autre saison. Madame Flood veut dire que nous n'y pour changer manière cyclone qui a changé si tellement vite et tant batzio ou quoi trouver ou j'ai perdu la connexion et puis les restes la terre. Alors assistance pour ces qualités c'est le fond ça là très important pour cette ci. En passant le mec là informé qui la caille n'y a été étonnement pour apprendre manière pour servir ces téléphones là. Il y a nous qui ces qualités téléphones là qui fait possible pour ni contact et puis les autres pays qui ni même qualité téléphones là si en cas y a un mauvais cyclone qu'on est payé. Gouvernement cette ci j'ai adopté une loi pour implémenter loi avec l'autre façon pour pousser égalité et droit pour toutes femmes et filles en pays. Gouvernement a trouvé assistance technique à l'autre nation unie. Nations Unies pour supporter WEG qui a étudié la meilleure façon pour ménager la loi pour assister à l'initiative SALA. L'organisation de Nations Unies, ça c'est éclat, a aidé à organiser des ateliers pour faire effort à la venir en réalité. Officier des affaires sociales pour éclat, Lydia Rosa Jenny, déclaré que c'est l'assistance te technique là, qui a renforcé la capacité du département qui va se pour établir un bon WEG des affaires femmes et non, et ça a assisté aussi le gouvernement cette ci pour implémenter un plan national. Et que résultat, ça a aidé pour payer à pousser et que c'est un commitment pour le programme. Ça là. Le directeur du département qui va se pour la relation des affaires femmes et non, Jenny Joseph, qui a aussi adressé cette cérémonie. C'est ce qui a fait une présentation pour la première fois concernant l'implémentation du développement. Ça là, il y a une grande discussion en mois de juillet l'année ici. Autorité pour la conservation nationale, en ce moment, Bureau Premier ministre de ici, département agricole, la pêche, coopératif des affaires ressources naturelles, ministre des affaires égalité et justice sociale, et gouvernement local et puis assistance programme national pour aider jeunesse à prendre l'état, qui a conduit un exercice d'étonnement pour, pour 120 les individus à la meilleure façon pour s'adresser à la situation. Principalement, manière pour faire produit hot c'est avec ça là et aussi meilleure manière pour déposer c'est mon qui a suivi et tout le monde ça sorti à ces quatre communes qui j'ai trouvé affecté sérieusement par problème ouais ça c'est comme une condamnée pour aller bico et vivre fort et tout le monde a commencé j'ai dit les trois mais et qui bout les trois j ça qui prépare ses participants pour participer à la phase implémentation qui a duré pour 
neuf mois pour commencer l'autorité nationale de conservation qui travail pour et puis la compagnie qui est business ou en pays, ça c'est Algas Organic. Côté où j'ai fait compagnie à plus que 160 livres ou Le projet de salaire qui est l'occasion de travailler pour les gens, c'est comme ça. Et qu'on s'est assuré que c'est comme ça, ça ne pas continuer pour souffrir avec problème ou à ça. La première phase où j'ai commencé à vivre fort. Et c'est comme ça que nous nouvelle nous. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas considérer que ce que la vie est la plus importante nouvelle à Créole. À présent, je vous remercie pour vous présenter, Michel. Merci, Opel Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers. Moist and unstable conditions in the atmosphere over the eastern Caribbean region will produce some scattered showers during the forecast period. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 9 miles per hour or 15 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 1.29 p.m. and will be low at 6.44 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was high at 2.36 p.m. and will be low again at 8 11 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.34 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.